The crowd charged. Camilo Cardozo still a little jet lagged after having to try to get Brazil to qualify for the Olympics. Unfortunately, they did not. She missed a couple of games, Missouri and UConn, and she is back. South Carolina in their home whites. Georgia, the underdog dogs, wearing their road reds. Georgia going to mix up their defenses between this matchup zone and the man-to-man, but you're going to get some touches in the interior for Cardozo to start this ball game. And here's Chloe Kitts getting it out. Raven Johnson just off the mark, but boy, so many people to clean up on the boards. Yeah, absolutely. That is the tough check when you're in a matchup zone, finding someone to make sure you box out, keep them off glass. And now pow, pow, pow. Such a good start. Wow. Such a good start to get Pow Pow going. Absolutely. Your 56-3 of the year. And there is a look at the starting lineup for the Georgia Bulldogs. Javin Nicholson has really been a spark plug, leading them in points, scoring. And she is key to everything that Coach Abe does as they get on the board. South Carolina, a lot of familiar faces. Raven Johnson has been terrific. Pow Pow, what a difference. The Oregon transfer. Bree Hall, Chloe Kitts, and Cardoso, who is in the conversation, certainly as a sure-fire All-American. Yeah, the matchup zone is what Coach Abe, Katie Abrahamson Henderson, is known for. This is her second year after a lot of success, success at UCF. A lot of success at UCF. Before that, at Albany, known for that zone. And Asia Avenger getting to the bucket. Avenger, her first year after a couple of years at San Diego State. Well, Coach Abe talked to us about this matchup zone. She said, you know, it takes a lot of time to be able to teach it. This group is in transition as Cardoso gets a foul. There's a good look at Coach Abe. Jordan Cole got the foul on Cardoso, who is 67% from the line. Six years at UCF, went to, went to three NCAA tournaments, six years at Albany before that, and before that, Missouri State. Remember a couple of years ago, they gave UConn all they could handle. UCF almost beat them in the second round. They absolutely did, and all of Coach Abe's teams are known for their defensive prowess. They get after you on the defensive end of the floor. This is a team this year, as well as a year ago, that struggles on the offensive end, so they've got to find ways to get easy buckets against an outstanding South Carolina defense. And that is uh, such a challenge. There's a turnover. South Carolina all over the national rankings, both offensively and defensively this season. Raven Johnson, her second three, and she got the interesting high bounce in her first basket. Hitting over 36% from three this season. Average only four points last year, more than doubled this season. That rims out, and now here's Johnson bringing the ball up. This is team over five assists per game. Kits. Kicks it right back out. Inside Cardoso. And she just wasn't as quick on the court. She has dropped 35 pounds. I talked with their performance coach, Molly Benetti. She said she has put in so much hard work behind the scenes, totally transforming her habits and her body. Raven is quick and confident on the court, and it totally shows. It absolutely does show. It shows in how she's playing. It shows in her leadership, her command of the offense and the defense. As Chloe Kitt gets to Guard getting it over to Thompson with the miss, and Kitts able to rebound and hang on with it, even on her knees. Cardoso can't let her get behind everybody. Missed it, but she's not going to miss on the second chance. And she drew the foul. And he can't afford to take chances 94 feet away from the bucket. South Carolina too good in transition. Cardoso with the rim run. Not able to get the first one, but no body. She is going to finish the second one. So Canola heads back to the free throw. And certainly has become a force on this team. Transferring from Syracuse. Had to wait her turn a little while. Is now blossoming as a senior in her third year in Columbia. Well, Coach Abe talking to us about running a lot of sets, making sure her team understands where their shots are going to come from, and that's good execution. Dawn Staley, who is a legend in these parts, in her 16th year here, just two wins away from 600 in her entire career, and she has done it all. The only player, only person ever to be named Naismith National Player of the Year and Naismith National Coach of the Year, Cardoso. 
boy, this is what she can do. You got a block, you think you're doing well, but then Camilla comes up. And, and that's why no matter how you play them for three quarters, their quality of depth can wear you down by the fourth quarter. And we've seen that in a few games this season. But outstanding young players who come in, who know their role, and who give this team a lift. Cardozo goes 0 for 2 from that trip. And we saw that Thursday night game you did at Tennessee, right? It was tied going into the fourth quarter. Yes, and South Carolina just continued to wear the Lady Vols down, knock down big shots. And Dawn Staley talked about her group, and she said they just have a will to win. They don't get rattled. And remember, this is a team that lost all five starters from a year ago that has this composure, that has this mentality. Yeah, it really is staggering considering losing five starters and the quality of the starters as well. That shot was wide. And here's for Wiley, who gets it out to Pow Pow. And uh, just a monumental task against the best team in the country right now. Inside, good look to Nicholson. And this is a great opportunity with Camila Cardoso on the bench to get Javin Nicholson some touch up touches on the low block. Around the horn, Johnson. Nicholson picks up the rebound. Javin also a fifth year player who has been in Athens her entire career. We're gonna see Georgia, if they don't have a wide open run out, they're going to execute offense. They're gonna try to take advantage try to get touches in specific areas and that's a great iso on the elbow and Nicholson has doubled her points per game from last year and has joined some great company with Janet Harris Nicholson only one game this year but she has not hit double figures in scoring and that was against Auburn and that's what they're going to have to do. They're just going to have to be scrappy on the defensive end. They've got to make sure we're securing the defensive glass and give them an opportunity on the offensive end. Yeah, giving South Carolina just one shot is huge. For Wiley tries to tie up Chapman. And an open lane, that's not going to make Don Staley very happy as Avenger was able to do his first team all Mountain West last year for the Aztecs and now starting here at Georgia or for Georgia, Chapman read it well and a burst of speed goes right by Pow Pow. Well, Chloe Chapman started her career as a dual athlete at Georgia. SEC all freshman as a soccer player. Now devoting her career to basketball. That's that's just pretty to get it inside. And Don Staley's going to likely talk to her team about getting the ball moving, get some pink touches in other ways. That's a shot. Good look and a terrific result. Boy, Avenger coming out. The full, full wide, they got lost in the screen to screener action, and Avenger had a wide open shot. And when you get open shots against this team, you got to knock them down. And she did that. And looky here, we are tied. Shot clock is off now for the rest of the quarter. Hawaii threw it. Right to Nicholson, and now Georgia can get the last points. Flanoy, too strong, follow blocked by Watkins. But Georgia ended the quarter on an 11 to 2. Well, Cardoso just creates such problems on both ends of the floor. She takes up the paint so you can't attack on the offensive end, and defensively, she is a nightmare to try to cover and keep off the glass. Pam Ward along with Stephanie White and Holly Rowe joining you. And. This game on ABC, our game day crew was here, first time ever on ABC. Boy, Nicholson, she has been really good. She's got eight points, and Georgia actually outscoring South Carolina now in the paint. Well, Jeff Nicholson just does such a good job of using her body. She does her work early. Her feet are ready to go. She uses her body to get scores. But this is what the difference is. If you get South Carolina to miss contested shots, you've got to finish the play. Early in the ball game, three early quick offensive rebounds for South Carolina turned into points. Now the Bulldogs locking down. Don Staley said she wanted a sub, but we still don't see Cardoza out there. She might want to put her in because Nicholson really is asserting herself. She wants him to figure out what it takes. That's tipped and another turnover. Fifth turnover already. And Avenger gets it over to Chapman. Chapman only averages about three points per the spacing right now. Everybody in, from South Carolina on the same line as Brie Hall knocks down a needed three. Her first points of the game. the crowd wanting that defense to stay stout 
foul. You know, we talked to Don Staley about it yesterday, and she said, you know, we are getting everybody's best game. They are number one, and people are coming for them. But she said, what I like about our team is we have composure. I have never seen this team get rattled or feel like they're not in it. They stay the course, and we've seen them come back and have some big second halves against LSU, against Tennessee. And again, you think about what this team lost, all five starters. Yes, Raven Johnson has has experience, Camilo Cardoso has experience, but not carrying the load and shouldering the load. And this is just a group who, as a whole, they don't get rattled, they're competitive, they make big shots when they need them, like Brie Hall, back-to-back -back threes. Last five games, Brie coming in and this 10 of her last 11 threes. She's buried a couple of them here to get the team to within one. But Georgia keeping composed. Regular season SEC tournament back in Greenville, South Carolina this year. Pow pow. So good. That's her third three of the game. She is hitting them at a 50% clip this year. And she's still working her way back. Raven Johnson. Georgia did a good job to get back. Pow pow. Has to give it up. Kitts turned around, realized she was open. Henderson comes up with the rebound. Coach Abe says they want to kind of let Henderson ease back into things. Another turnover. Johnson, perfect pass. Bothered by Avenger, but not much. Hey, and that was a small thing that Raven Johnson did, but a smart thing. 17 to 2 Georgia run with one of their own. Levels coming. Henderson. Got it. That's what she does. She can stretch the floor with her three point shooting. Four spacer. Rebound taken down by Amaya Evans. Which Abe using a lot of her bench in this game. Hits with the defense, but the foul and count it for Nicholson. Well, they're doing such a good job on the defensive end of securing the defensive board, forcing contested shots, forcing South Carolina to take a lot of threes. Now Watkins getting it over to Pow Pow. And then another turnover. Gosh, that's an ill-conceived pass trying to get it inside the walker. Eight giveaways by South Carolina for Wiley will come in. In the next opportunity for South Carolina. Good defense that time, but holy. Javin Nicholson is having herself a day. We keep talking about Javin Nicholson getting the ball against Camilla Cardoso. We haven't seen that matchup very often, and Nicholson continues to go to work. She's quick off her feet to get the second opportunity. She uses both hands so well. She's a strong frame, strong body, gets into defenders, and finishes with contact. Three fouls on Ashlyn Watkins. So she is going to limit Cardoso's minutes because she's coming back from an overseas commitment and still is not feeling 100%. A takeaway, Avenger, back to Avenger, maybe one pass too many, but Avenger wisely pulls it out with a shot clock off. And you can see Coach Abe over on the sideline saying, calm down, we want to make sure we get the last shot. Avenger guarded by Johnson. Now she goes the screen by Evans. No whistle, and South Carolina held was held scoreless for the last four and a half. And they maintain it throughout the course of 40 minutes. Dawn Staley used her bench quite a bit in the first half. Only got two bench points. They averaged 33 per game from their reserves. And we'll see what they have up their sleeves in the first half. Cardozo misses, but a terrific offensive rebounder. But Georgia's done a great job of just getting their hands in there. And South Carolina is trying to set a new all-time SEC record with 43 straight conference regular season wins. To do that, they will have to come back from eight points down. It's been three years since they trailed by as many as eight points in the second half.
That was against Kentucky. They came back to win that game. But Javin Nicholson, man, she's got 20 now. And he changed the matchup. First half, Chloe Kitts had the check. Second half, Camilla Cardoso and Javin Nicholson just takes her out to the perimeter. She left after their Ole Miss game on a Sunday and flew to Brazil, where she was the anchor for the Brazilian national team as they tried to qualify for the Paris Olympics at a tournament in Belém, Brazil. She has had a wild time. February 8th, played against Australia, a narrow loss by five points. Then against Serbia, where she had a double-double. And then a heartbreaking loss by two points against Germany. They did not qualify. She came back, rested a day, then practiced, then played against Tennessee. And Don Staley said, you know, she is definitely having jet lag. They are going to limit her minutes today. But the problem is when they took her out, that's when Georgia went on that run. So Camilla Cardoza, bless her heart, she is fighting through this. She was putting it on for her country. And now here she's back trying to get it put on for her Gamecocks. Well, absolutely, Holly. We saw her before the game and she was chatting and it was mentioned that she is still tired. Did play 10 minutes in that first half. She's gotten to the line a lot, but it's only three of seven in free throws. And a heartbreaking that Brazil could not make the Olympic tournament. That's good ball movement, but Kitts. That post entry pass, high post dive will be there. Illinois with the miss. Cardosa gets the rebound. Bree Hall cut off. Because Georgia doing a really good job of stemming fast breaks. Javin Nicholson picked up her 10th rebound of the game, so she's gotten herself 13th double-double this season. And that ties Angel Reese for the most in the SEC. Pretty good company to be in. For an August 2nd, 2001, that makes her coming up on 23. <laughs> oh, wow. For those of those sticks with it, a lot of settling for long contested jump shots against the zone. Illinois did a good job to rid herself of three hall, but couldn't hit the jumper. Yeah, and Damari Fornoy is averaging almost 10 points a ball game, and she has struggled to find it in this one. Coming off a good game against Vanderbilt, where she had a season-high 19, hit all three of her threes. 16 seconds on the shot clock, Raven Johnson. All the way out to Hall, who decided not to pull the trigger. Watch that soft area of the zone. You got to meet Cardoso a little higher. That was a great recovery by Evans initially, but then too much body, and Maya's called for her second foul. And I think that's that's one where you got to be smart. You have to force Chloe Kids to knock down those shots. And Jordan Cole, 91 starts in a UGA uniform, so she's the most experienced player on the floor. Started the ball game, saddled with early fouls. Cardosa picks up the rebound. And settles it with Pow Pow. Yeah, side kids. Got it. And Ward Step White and Holly Rowe join you. This big afternoon. The college game day crew was in town for the first time ever for an ABC women's game. Nicholson. Oh, man, can't miss. Goodness, that was a heck of a shot by Javin Nicholson and good poise by Georgia, not getting rushed, letting it go down to the end of the shot clock. They had missed their last six shots before Nicholson got that one to go. Hit by seven at the half, and Cardoso, so good at drawing fouls, does that again. Double double and three blocks and the come from behind win against Tennessee on Thursday in Knoxville. On that Wooden Award late season list for National Player of the Year. Nice. And that's Cole inside to Nicholson who drew a foul. Nicholson now with nine straight. Double doubles. Leading retain, returning scorer on a team that lost so much from last season. A lot of experience, and Nicholson certainly has answered the call. Caitlin Clark just passed her on Thursday. She held that record for quite some time. Uh, yeah, she absolutely did. And it was very gracious 
in rooting yes, for uh, for Caitlin to break it. Well, he kicks inside. They're starting to attack the paint more certainly than they did. Then you see Georgia controlling the tempo, bringing it back out, executing offense. That's a terrific bounce pass to Cole Wiley. When South Carolina gets going in transition, this is when you feel the danger zone. First lead since the middle of the second quarter for South Carolina. A whistle and a foul on South Carolina, but Malaysia full while he gets her first points. Well, a missed shot at the rim, and South Carolina turns on the Jets for Wiley getting out in transition. You can start to feel momentum shifting plays. Georgia has done a really good job of not allowing South Carolina to go on big runs, but defensive energy, rebounds for long outlets and scores is what gets them going. In almost 20 years since Georgia has beaten a number one team. And that was in the Pat Summit's long line of great teams. Tennessee has the record for 42 straight SEC regular season wins tied now. They've done that in two different occasions. Tied now with South Carolina. Four ties and six lead changes. South Carolina's gotten hot, making four of their last five shots. And watch the different ways that South Carolina now attacks the zone with no Cardoso. So Wiley drew a foul. Well, Wiley, a 76% free throw shooter on the season. Big Monday hits Tobacco Road tomorrow. Is Hannah Hidalgo third in the country in points per game. Boy, this freshman class, I know we talked about it all year. Yeah, Juju, you know, Caitlin. Yeah, but there's two freshmen right behind her, and Juju and Hannah. Outstanding freshman class. Could have a couple of All-Americans that are freshmen this season. Georgia has now gone almost three and a half minutes without a point. Here comes South Carolina. For Wiley, spins, walk in, finish. Team now down by four, Chancey pass on the bounce. We hit two minutes to go in the third quarter. Wiley got it into Kitts, who couldn't handle it cleanly. Here's Chapman. Terrific bounce pass. Count it. Gets a hands on it defensively, leading Damari Flournoy. That's a great job of stopping so she could create the contact and strong finish. Well, Coach Abe said that Florinai is undersized, but she plays so hard. Her determination is really helping them defensively, and she was someone to be sure and point out before the game that she's the one with the heart that's really making this team great right now. And it's really amazing, Holly, the way that we have seen Georgia come out. This is a team that's just 11-13 and 13 on the season. They've only won two SEC games, playing in one of the most intimidating environments in the country, and they're not intimidated at all. Watkins at the line, and Ashlyn Watkins, sophomore from right here in Columbia. It sure is. She's a player that Don Staley talks about. It's really starting to come together for her. Great save as the ball's about to go out of bounds. But then South Carolina ultimately loses it. Illinois. Good look inside the kits. Chapman working on Johnson. Do it right before Wiley. Goes behind the back. Johnson attacks. What a finish in this quarter. For the number one team in the country. They held Georgia to only nine points.
in that quarter. Yes, another sold-out building here at Columbia Life Arena. South Carolina, the number one team in the country, trying to run its record to 25-0. and 0. They've never had more than two sellouts in any season. They've already doubled it with this one this afternoon. Nicholson, they tried it. That's what Coach Abe talked yeah. about. You get it into Nicholson, and then she's fouled. He only has two points. Nicholson with a career high in points today. Right now, 25 points, and that with Cardoso in the ball game. Chloe Kitts is going to play around in that soft spot and look for the high low. Right off the inbounds. And Pam, we talk an awful lot about Camila Cardoso's ability to score and rebound, but she averages over two assists a game. She knows double teams are coming. She knows she's got to be able to find her teammates. That was an outstanding pass on the inbound play. Raven Johnson with the finish, and now with the rebound. Nicholson, by the way, sat for all of 30 seconds before she came back in for Cardoso. As you mentioned, pretty good passer as well, leading her team in scoring, rebounding, field goal percentage, blocks, double doubles, etc., etc., etc. Pow Pow's been quiet for a while. Cardoso, just keep on working. Um, I'm inviting some of the South Carolina guards to dog class, which is a camp that helps transition college women to the pro level um, with different resources. So whether that's strength and conditioning, mental health, business acumen, uh, something that our game doesn't have, but trying to build that bridge. So I'm um, excited to be here for that. You're someone good to listen to. Two-time WNBA champion. You have figured that out, but you're also coming back from qualify or USA Basketball where you played for the national team. How exciting has that been? That was super fun. Um, you know, obviously representing your country, we're trying to prepare for parents. So it was a, it was an incredible experience, and uh, we're going to continue to get better. And um, yeah, I mean, it, it's a great group, and it's, it's the it's the best players in the world. All right, I'll let you go. I know Asia Wilson's salty that you're here and she's not. Well, listen, Holly, she wrote a book, and then she thinks she can bring 37 bags to All Star because she's a diva. So that's what we're dealing with here. All right, simplify, Asia. Do less. <laughs> you got to be able to knock down shots. You don't get too many of them. You're certainly not going to get a lot of offensive rebounds. Pow, pow. And you already mentioned Cardoso, what a good passer she is. That's her fifth assist. That's thrown to the first row. And she's coming baseline. If she gets it, turns, pops, hits. And boy, it hasn't worked out. I know a lot of us across the country, when we heard she was coming here to South Carolina, thought it was... It was surprising, and, and Tahina herself was surprised that South Carolina reached out. Yeah, talking to Don Staley, they didn't recruit those Chloe Kitts, gets another rim run. And Don Staley's coached a lot of great players. But talking about her poise, talking about her ability to impact the game in a lot of different ways, her leadership. And Riley got the block on one end, and then over to Kitts, who couldn't finish. And South Carolina on a big run. In this half, South Carolina has limited Georgia to four field goals, and the Dogs have turned it over ten times. Camilla again. They find different ways to win ball games. And finally, Georgia. She is over half of Georgia's points on the afternoon. Inside. She doesn't look jet lagged or tired to me right now. Well, Dawn Staley told us, she said, I can save my post players until the fourth quarter because we have quality depth. I can keep them fresh. We can continue to come in waves. Depth is a luxury. There's no doubt about it. And they certainly have it on this team. And that's the scary part for opponents. You think you're in the game, but then here come the Gamecocks. Henderson with her second three of the game. On court ruling is confirmed. Georgia ball. What a great atmosphere to come down here to Columbia. It absolutely is. A lot of fun. Of course, always terrific fan support. Dawn Staley shouting out the fans in her interview with Holly. What a terrific atmosphere. Here. That's got to be good. Savannah Henderson again coming back from an injury that cut short her freshman year last year. 
when she was an early enrollee when Coach Abe was at UCF, had had an injury in high school, was able to finish high school early, become an early enrollee at UCF. And there goes a, with another double-double. Some freshmen around the country that have been letting things up. It, it seems like, no, they didn't need any transitional period. They yeah. just came in and were great. And you just mentioned the LSU-Tennessee game, and, of course, a terrific freshman on LSU as well. But we're talking about Juju Watkins, Anna Hidalgo, Michaela Williams, and Malaysia Fulwiley, you mentioned, Talia Scott, who leads the SEC in, in scoring. Just some outstanding freshmen. Raven Johnson now going the other way. South Carolina, you can't mention Madison Booker at Texas. Yes. You know, just when you think Texas is, Brie Hall knocks down another three. Texas loses Rory Harmon. You think they're going to be in so much trouble. Madison Booker continues to to play outstanding, give that team a lift, and Vic Schaefer continues to do Vic Schaefer things. Yeah, had a big win against Iowa State yesterday. Cardoso, come on now. She's got 16 points and 16 rebounds. She had a double-double just in the second half. 12 points, 11 rebounds just in the second half as South Carolina sets a record with its 43rd straight regular season SEC win. But kudos to Georgia who yes. hung into this basketball game. An outstanding effort by this Georgia Bulldog team. For 30 minutes, they were right there. And South Carolina does what South Carolina does and wears you down.